Good morning, class. Good morning, Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Faith School is the place where our spirit is fed, our faith grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers. Uh, Jesus said, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so just like your body <clears throat> can't go days and, and months without being fed, uh, without getting weak, and actually the body will die. But the spirit, if it's not fed, it'll get weak. And it'll just get weaker and weaker. It won't die because it can't cease to exist, but it just keeps getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And uh, <clears throat> when you're dealing with something and it seems big or overwhelming, that's where your strength of spirit comes in. Proverbs says the strong spirit of a man will sustain him or her even in bodily pain or trouble. And so when something just seems overwhelming to you and it just seems like there's no need in even trying, it's not that it's so big, it's not that it's too hard, certainly not for God, but it's that your faith is so weak. And even if you look at, you know, maybe you, you need to get a, place to stay or you need to get a vehicle or you need to pay some bills or need to do something for the kids and it looks like a lot of money. Well, it's not that it's that much actually. It's just that faith and vision is so small. And the stronger your spirit gets, the easier it looks because <laughs> you're not just comparing it to what you can do. You're looking at what God can do in the situation and nothing's too hard for him. Nothing's impossible to him. All things, Jesus said, are possible to him that believes. Is that us? Are we believers around here? Well, let's pray today and believe the Lord to give us exactly what we need uh, for today and for this week. And um, the thing that will just go right into our spirit and help us to be the overcomers he made us to be. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much. Thank you for the privilege of knowing you, walking with you, living with you. Thank you, Lord, for your word that feeds us and nourishes us up, the words of faith. <clears throat> Thank you for your spirit who quickens us and enables us to, uh, to see the light, to walk in the light, and to overcome every trial and obstacle. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You can go with me, please, in the great textbook of the Bible to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews chapter 10. For some, uh, some weeks now, we've been on a study of Hebrews 11, that great faith chapter, and we're calling it By Faith. Because you see verse after verse after verse, that's how it starts. By Faith. So in verse 38 of chapter 10, it says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Uh, this great truth in this verse uh, has not been realized by millions of church-going people. What do you mean, Brother Keith? Well, so many have been preached to that God is controlling everything, everybody, and that everything is up to Him. And so people take a passive stance that we're just waiting to see uh, what's going to happen. And if it happens, well, that must have been the will of God. If it doesn't happen, it must not have been the will of God. And this is deception. This is not true. This is not what the Word says, this is not what Jesus taught as He ministered on the earth. Notice what it said, uh, we're not of those who draw back, 
Faith is not passive. Faith is a possessor. <laughs> Faith rises up and lays hold. Do you remember 1 Timothy 6.12? It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold. Lay hold. Now, uh, sometimes people are saying, well, we just need to let go. <laughs> we just need to, to just let go and let God. Well, if you're talking about letting go of your care and your worry and your anxiety and casting your cares over on the Lord, yes. But if you're talking about just sitting back and doing nothing and leaving everything up to God, then you'll do without. You'll not see results. And you'll see that in this 11th chapter, when he gives example after example after example of people who lived by faith and walked by faith, they did not sit passively by. They did something. There was action. And that's what James gets into talking about. Faith without an action is dead. And, and dead faith gets no results. So you've got to, you got to give God something to work with. You've got to give him something to bless. Right? You know, sometimes people pray the prayer, Lord, help me. Oh, please help me. Help me. But oftentimes they're not saying it right. What they really mean is, Lord, do it for me. <laughs> you know, if I, if I say, guys, you know, come help me move this desk. And so y'all get up and I, then I go over here and sit down. <laughs> well, I didn't say it right, did I? <laughs> I should have said, would you go do it for me? Because if you're going to help me, then you're going to assist me while I'm doing something. Assist me in what I'm doing. So if I say, help me, and I go sit down, what would you do? You'd come sit down with me because that's what I'm doing, right? You're helping me. And so when people say, oh, God, help me, help me, help me. So many times they're not saying it right. What, what in their mind, they're saying, do it for me. Uh, take me over. Make me do it. He's not going to do that. It's the enemy who is the manipulator, who tries to coerce and force and control, not God. You remember, he says, I stand at the door and knock. Well, what does that mean? So, well, I've had people say, well, man, if God wants you to do something, you're going to do it. You're going to, well, no. Uh, is he going to come in unless you open the door? He's not. Why would he say, I stand at the door and knock? He's God. He could make the door dematerialize. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but he's not going to do that. Why? Because unless an individual has complete free will, you cannot have real faith. You cannot have real love, a real submission, unless somebody really has a choice not to do it. So he has made us with a real Free will. And uh, that's what's wrong with the planet is so many people are choosing not to do his will. But uh, verse uh, 38, it says, uh, <clears throat> If any man draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back to perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We're not those who draw back, pull back, lay back. We are of those who keep going. Right? We keep going. We lay hold. We possess the land. We rise up. We ask. We seek. We knock. We lay hold. Is that right, class? In, in verse 1 of chapter 11, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Today's English version says, To have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for and to be certain of the things we cannot see. Faith is not ambiguous. Faith is not wavering, which is why you cannot pray the prayer of faith to receive something unless and until you are sure of God's will for you to have it. We talked about this uh, on last week's classes. Many people have said, Lord, you know, I ask for this or that, if it be thy will. Well, that cannot be a prayer of faith because uh, you're not sure if it's God's will or not. Uh, we've learned you don't pray that way for the new birth. You don't pray that way uh, to be born again. Lord, you know, I'm going to receive Jesus as my Lord if it be thy will. No, we don't pray that way. Lord, I, I want to receive forgiveness for my sins if it be thy will. We don't pray that way. 
But why? Because we know the will of God. We have found it from his word. So we can pray a prayer of faith. And so faith is strong, generally speaking, uh, in, in most churches for people to get born again, people to receive forgiveness. Faith is strong for that. But if you haven't heard uh, God's will in the other areas, like in him providing for you materially, or healing for your body, or peace, or protection, or these kind of things, then you're still questioning the will of God. And uh, here it says, to have faith is to be sure. Somebody say sure, sure. sure. And, and uh, the things we hope for, and to be certain of the things we cannot see. Don't you like the sound of that? <clears throat> sure, certain, <laughs> assured, convinced, confident, these are all words that describe the real God kind of faith. And if you say, well, I, Brother Keith, I'm, I'm not convinced. So what can I do? You can come to faith school every day. <laughs> you, you can get yourself in this book, right? And, and find out. Somebody says, well, I, how do I know if it's God's will? His word is his will. His word reveals his will. And what Jesus bought and paid for in all the work of redemption, obviously it's his will for us to have it or he wouldn't have come and purchased it for us, right? He wouldn't have paid such a price to get it. So the chastisement of our peace was on him, so we know it's his will for us to have peace. He took our, our sins and, and bare our transgressions, so we know it's his will for us to be forgiven and cleansed from those things. He took our infirmities, bore our sicknesses, carried our pains, so we know it's his will for us to be healed. And the Bible said he was made poor for our sakes, that we might be made rich, so we know it's his will for us to have abundance. And have what we need. Amen. And if you're still questioning it, you, you can't pray the prayer of faith. You're in a bad spot. So go ahead and get in the word enough to get it settled. Get it settled. That if he said it, it's his will. Don't listen to anybody else about it. And rise up boldly and lay hold of what Jesus has bought and paid for. Well, we see in beginning in verse 2 all the way through verse 40 that he gives us example after example after example of people who lived by faith and walked by faith in a manner that pleased God so well that he had him recorded for us for every generation so that now these many centuries later, uh, you and I are still talking about it, looking at it. Why? Because uh, 2 Corinthians says we have the same spirit of faith that they had. Same spirit of faith, faith works exactly the same. So we should not just read these ooing and eyeing at them and what they did and what was accomplished there. Yes, we should be impressed, but we should also be looking, okay, that's how you do it. All right, okay, that's, that's how they did it. That's how I'm going to do this, right? We, we need to be looking for practical application of everything they did in our life. There's a place where it applies. We can do the same thing. So we saw that by faith Abel offered an excellent sacrifice. By faith Enoch was translated. He walked with God. Verse 7, by faith Noah, he prepared an ark to the saving of his house. We see by faith Abraham, by faith Sarah. We see on down in verse uh, 20, by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. And Jacob spoke of the future. And then Joseph also in verse 22, by faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Uh, he died at about age 110, I think. And so he told them when he died that the Lord had spoken that at the end of 400 years, he was bringing his people out of there. And he said, it's going to happen. I'm, I'm leaving. I won't see it personally. But when you go, take my bones with you. <laughs> don't, don't leave my bones here in Egypt. Because when you leave, I want, I want my bones to go with you. <laughs> and he made, he made them commit to it. He said, now give me your word. You're going you're gonna to take my bones. That may sound strange to us, but this was an act of faith. Why? Because they have no reason to think they're leaving. They're going anywhere, especially as time went on, century after century, the whole population of Israelis became slaves. 
And the whole uh, economy of Egypt was based on the slave uh, labor population. Uh, the scripture even tells us that entire treasure cities were built by the Israeli slaves and servants. And we see, you know, when it, when it came time for them to leave and the signs and wonders begin to happen, at every juncture, when Pharaoh got any relief, he said, no, no, they can't go. They can't go. Why? Why was he so obstinate? Because this is their economy. This is what, and they're the greatest nation on earth. They're the greatest empire, the richest, the most powerful, but it's all built on the backs of the Israelite uh, servants and slaves. And so uh, God, uh, God told Moses and Aaron, he said, he, he's not going to let you go. He's, uh, he's not going to let you go, but when I get through, he'll let you go. <laughs> and it, it took, it took something. He had, he had to shake that, that place to its knees. But how many know nobody's bigger than God? Is that right? Nobody's bigger than him. And so what we see, this, uh, their departure was set in motion actually when Moses was born. In verse 23, we see that by faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents. Now that's his parents' faith. He was just a baby. He, he's not, you know, responsible for anything yet. But his we talked about that earlier that the, the, the King James says they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Other uh, passages say he was a beautiful child. Others say he was uh, not an ordinary, but a special child. And, and they found it in their heart to overcome the fear of Pharaoh's command that could have caused the death of the entire family if they were caught with a male baby because he had commanded that all male uh, you know, babies born that were male were to be immediately uh, thrown out and exposed to the elements to be killed. And, um, but they, their faith overcame their fear. Can you see this, friends? Faith in God will overcome the fear of man. Faith in God will enable you to overcome the fear of anything that's coming against you. The scripture says that Jesus took part of flesh and blood in the book of Hebrews, it says, so that he through death might destroy him that had the power of death and deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Fear puts and keeps you in bondage, makes you subject to it. But when you get full of faith, it pushes that fear out of you <laughs> and you're no longer afraid. Uh, I mean, everybody else, everybody else was discarding their own infants. Uh, well, how could you do that? Well, to, to keep the rest of your kids alive, to keep the rest of your family alive. But they did not do it. And the Bible said in verse uh, 24, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. In reading about Moses, we know, according to this passage, that the things he did, he did by faith. But you get insights into why he did what he did. Not just his acts, uh, but also the ways. Notice with me in Psalm 103, if you want to uh, turn back there and look. Psalm 103 and the seventh verse. It's an interesting thing it says here that God, Psalm uh, 103 verse 7, it said, God made known his ways to Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. This is a, a wonderful insight. Um, there's a lot of people who've read scriptures and have heard about things God has done. But that doesn't mean you understand his ways. Just like any other person, you might uh, see what they did, 
But that doesn't mean you have insight into how they think and how they process and their values. And uh, you'll see that Moses, he had, a, he had a, a relationship and fellowship with God that nobody else had in his generations and days. You understand back then, you couldn't be born again. It wasn't available. And so the Spirit of God didn't dwell inside every individual uh, like he does now in the church. The Spirit of God would come on people to anoint them to be a prophet, to anoint them to be a, a king or a, a psalmist. Um, but uh, the average person, they didn't have the Spirit in them or on them. And uh, Moses, the Bible said, he spoke to God face to face. <laughs> now, if you read more carefully, he didn't actually see God's face. Somebody said, well, that's a contradiction. No, it's not. There's no contradictions in the Bible. They're just people that don't know things. <laughs> they don't understand it. Face to face means positionally, like we're, we're, we're looking towards each other, but God would have a cloud of glory over him, and you didn't actually see his face. At one time, Moses requested to see him, and the Lord said, you can't see my face, and live. Now, you really see some awesome things about God in reading Exodus, and, and uh, actually Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, uh, how God dealt with Moses. His, his power was so awesome and so great and the people did not have access through the new covenant like we did, that when God came down on the mountain to give the Ten Commandments, He kept telling them, nobody must come on the mountain. Uh, no animals, nobody can come near. He kept stressing that to them. Why? Because apparently uh, their mortal being just couldn't handle uh, being that close to His presence. And He didn't want to, He told them, He said, lest many of you perish. Because if a bunch of people would say, whoo, whoo, God's on the mountain, let's run up and see. Well, that means you all die. And because access was not made, was not yet available. But uh, God enabled Moses. He didn't see his face either, but he enabled him to come right up to him. <laughs> and you remember on one occasion, after being there for 40 days, a month and a half, not eating, not drinking, didn't need to, uh, taking uh, things down from God, writing down ordinances, statutes, getting the exact plan for the tabernacle and all those things. When he came down at one point, one time, his face was just beaming <laughs> like a flashlight. And the people said, whoa, whoa, what? Put something over your face. <laughs> But uh, this is the same God we call Father, Abba, <laughs> Father. Can you say amen? amen? He is awesome beyond description. Well, you think about this. What kind of being can create a galaxy and sustain all the stars? What kind of being can create a planet like ours? What kind of being can create something like us? <laughs> well, the one who created us is greater than us, right? And Moses, uh, in, in many ways, was intimate with God. I mean, he, and, and, that, and he, he wanted to know, he said, not just God's acts, but his ways. Do you have a desire for that as well, Amen. friend? Not just to know about God, but to know Him, <laughs> know Him personally, and to begin to get insight into uh, how He thinks, and what He likes, what He doesn't like, and what He loves, and what He hates. And um, that's why we're given the Spirit of God, that's why we're given the Word of God, and it's up to us how much time we want to spend with Him. You know, He won't force us. But uh, you'll find that uh, that's what happened with Enoch. 
is that he started walking with God. And again, don't, don't over-spectacularize this. It said he did it by faith. Well, faith is just being sure of what you expect and hope for and being convinced of what you don't see. So Enoch was not seeing, but he'd just go out apart by himself and say, God, I want to hang out with you. I want to fellowship with you. And he wasn't seeing and feeling everything, but he did it by faith and he kept doing it by faith and he kept doing it by faith. He did it for years and years and years. You keep doing something by faith year after year, you develop in it. And he was drawing near to the Lord. And what did the Bible say would happen when you do that? He'll draw near to you. He'll respond. And it got to a place where walking with God was so real to him, it was as real to him being with God as any other human person and talking and communing with him that he just slipped all the way out of here <laughs> and stayed with God, was translated. And the Bible said all that happened by faith. We need to remind ourselves it was not by some spectacular experience that just fell on Enoch all at once. He started doing it how? By faith. Can we do it by faith? You can do it anytime you want to. You can go to a quiet place and just sit down and start talking to the Father. And don't, don't act religious about it. Talk to Him like He's there, right? And, and tell Him that, you know, how, how you feel about Him and, and tell Him how thankful you are for all the things that He's doing for you and all the good things He's given you. And as you develop in your faith, you'll actually press in and draw closer. And what did he say he would do? You draw near to him. He'll, he'll draw closer to you. He'll become more and more real to you. For people who don't believe in God, he's not real to them. And so it seems to confirm their lack of faith. And they think, well, there is no God. And to them, it looks and feels like it. But it's only because they're not drawing near to him. They don't believe. But for those who do, he becomes more real than any human person around us. Is that your desire? Say it out loud. Father God, by faith, I draw near to you. I seek your fellowship and your face. And I thank you that you draw near to me every day and every night in Jesus' name. Praise God. Well, that's it. Our time's up again uh, for class. But we're going to come right back uh, tomorrow and the next and the next. So we'll see you again next in Faith School. I've got a victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941 Seven zero two seven three nine zero.